Hello, hello. Welcome to the Five Talents Podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. I interview the top commercial real estate investors and industry experts so you can learn from their experiences. So if you're an investor, a high W-2 earner or real estate or tech sales professional that wants to invest in real estate without having to manage properties or leave your day job, then this podcast is for you. Or if you're already investing in real estate, but you're doing it part-time and you wanna become a full-time multifamily or full-time commercial real estate investor, this podcast is for you too. You're gonna learn a ton. You will learn from real life multifamily investors and other professionals in the industry. They're gonna share their blueprints for success and I'm super excited that you're here. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, hello, Abel Pacheco here with the Five Talents Podcast. We're super excited today. We have a couple of amazing guests. Uh, and if you are in the commercial real estate community, you know uh, both Kelly and Anselmo from SAS. They are kind of staples uh, to our community at many of the conferences, many of the networking events, and just a really couple of, you know, just all around great uh, individuals to provide value. They're always giving their two cents, their education, their nuggets on various different topics. But, you know, as, as you know, on the five talents podcast, we talk about commercial real estate and multifamily is where we end up heading a lot of the, a lot of the times and how to create financial freedom through that. And, uh, what, what they do provides direct bottom line, uh, impact to net operating income to many of our, pro- to, to many of our properties, which basically comes down to, oh, uh, increase of return for investors, which we're all looking for. So I'm super excited. I think we're going to have a fun conversation and uh, excited to have you guys. So Kelly and Selmo, let me turn it over to you. I I, I don't think I'll do your introduction justice. So please tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and, and we'll just jump into a conversation. Well, you did a great job, Abel. Thank you for having us. And Selmo, I'm going to have you kick us off this morning with the introductions. Awesome. Thank you, Kelly. So uh, my name is Anselmo Torres III. I have been involved really in water conservation for the last five years. I created a water monitoring program about five years ago uh, to help multifamily property owners uh, monitor their water consumption in, in real time. So In that experience, uh, I got to walk over 30,000 units, over 300 properties, and uh, I saw a lot of things. Um, One of the key things was that I realized it's really hard to uh, change human behavior. It's much easier to change their toilets, shower heads, and aerators. (laughs) That's how I got involved with the SAS. Yeah. Did you say 300 units, 30,000 doors? What, what yes. was this? Two, two numbers? Holy moly. So 300 properties, over 300 properties now wow. all over the country too, from California to Florida to uh, you know Michigan and everywhere in between. So yeah, I, I haven't made it to Hawaii yet. It, yeah. able, so able, we're looking for that. <laughs> yeah, if any, if anybody Hawaii. has a property there, you know, <laughs> you know, who will help you do, you know, do the yeah. property to me. That's awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so that's a little wow. bit about me, but, uh, uh, then of course we have the potty princess, the potty princess. Yes. And the first time, uh, I just want to let you know, I felt a little uncomfortable putting your, your hashtag the first time. <laughs> I did. And, and then after the first one, I was like, Oh, this is pretty awesome. Second, third tag you a couple of times. And I got the potty princess, <laughs> Kelly. Nice to have you too. Thank you for having us. So, um, yeah, I mean, hashtag the potty princess. Uh, we get that a lot. People are uncomfortable. Um, and it's just an uncomfortable conversation anyway, talking about, you know, toilets. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and Samo and I bring, you know, some humor to, to this topic. Um, but in addition to that, we're able to deliver some significant, you know, reductions to the water and sewer expense lines and boost those asset values. But um, I have had a passion around water and energy conservation for uh, a very long time in my previous professional year, uh, previous professional uh, role, I was uh, part of an organization that uh, was an MRO distributor around the world, and I helped them launch their energy services division. And, you know, just like in our space today with networking, through that led me to be introduced to 
uh, the owners here at SAS. And uh, three and a half years ago, I uh, made the transition where now I get to get up every morning and do exactly where my personal mission is, which is to preserve our world's most precious resource. Um, you know, so we're able to, you know, leave that legacy, right, for our children, our future generations. But I mean, super awesome because I'm fulfilled on that side, but then our clients are fulfilled because they're seeing a significant increase to their cash flow. And that just makes this so much fun. But I will say, I never could have thought, you know, in a million years that through my conservation journey, that it would be specifically around the world of toilets. And so, <laughs> and yep. Summo and I are seriously your phone a friend for anything interior water conservation related. Right so, on. Yeah. Well, that is so awesome. Uh, so we've, we've got more than a, f a few things to dig in already. So I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, tell us how long, uh, well, tell us a little bit about SAS also, yeah. uh, just so we have a background. So both of you guys were with SAS, represent them. Who, you know, what is SAS? What does it stand for? How long have you guys been around? Just give a couple of nuggets so we, we understand. Yes. Uh, so it is Sustainability Solutions. And that's a lot to you know, get out there. So I usually just you know, pare it down to the acronym SAS. Now, SAS has been in business now for 20 years. And the founder of the organization really started through um, you know, like metering, like sub metering on properties. And through that journey, it evolved into doing these conservation upgrades that mm -hmm. was really specific around the green lending, right? There were not a whole lot of resources out there for that. And um, the founder of the organization decided um, he was ready about, uh, I guess it was like 11 or 12 years ago, he was ready to go ahead and transition to his next chapter in his life, which is retirement and travel the world with his beautiful wife. And so he sold his company to uh, the private investors. And here we are. So, um, you know, and Samo and I partnered in, you know, uh, just over three years ago and really have taken this organization apart and put it back together because it was really just a, tra a transactional. What we were finding is that clients would come to SAS because their lender said, hey, you have to do water conservation and energy conservation on your property. And so they don't know why they're doing it and really how it's going to benefit them. They just know that, hey, I got this reduced interest rate with this green loan. And you know, if I default on it, then we're in big trouble. So that's where, and Samo and I started finding that there was a huge gap in the educational resources and truly how do these types of projects benefit your uh your cash flow on the property and how does it boost the asset value so we just started connecting and just started opening up the conversation and this is where we are so at this point um, we work with clients all across the country and at the point of underwriting a deal, you're looking at a deal considering that you're going to submit an LOI mm -hmm. or at the point of, you know, even if you already own the property now and you're looking for more innovative ways to, you know, provide more distribution to your investors, um, reach out to us. And that's, that's what we'll do is run some preliminary analysis. And then the next step is that we will be able to run this turnkey and our crews will access 50 to 60 bathrooms a day. So for our property owners, they're able to benefit from that reduction on their water and sewer bill, that first mm -hmm. full monthly billing cycle. Um, so we probably need to you know, share with the listeners uh, what this financial benefit looks like, right? You know, if we're reducing the water and sewer anywhere between, you know, 30 to 60%, then what is, how does that translate onto the water and sewer expense line? And we typically will see anywhere of like a 20 to 40% reduction. 
And if you have a 20 to 40% reduction, if we just took an example, it's like a $50,000, you know, investment to upgrade, you know, maybe a 200 bathroom property. Let's say it's going to be a $50,000 reduction on the water and sewer expense line year one. And say it's running a six and a half cap, then that's like a $769,000 asset value boost. I mean, that's massive. Yes. Because and it's toilets. Yeah, absolutely. So we're all in it to make as much money as possible. And when you can have a very uh, direct impact on the bottom line by doing something uh, as, as what I say, simple, uh, it's probably not simple, you know, exactly simple to you guys. You make it simple <laughs> for the yeah. investors. Uh, but once it's, it's, it's completed across all of the units, then we're, we're making a lot of money. But then also, let me, let me go back to a few things. Cause, so this is really awesome. And I'm sorry, my internet cut somewhere along this. So I don't know exactly how much of it got out. And uh, hopefully everything, you know, we recorded the last 30 seconds or so. I think I, I cut out. But um, I heard at the beginning, uh, water conservation, and my head goes to impact investing, uh, which I'm a big impact investing kind of guy. Uh, the sustainability was something that, you know, I don't know if we really, really hit on that a, a lot of times. We're just trying to make as much money as possible. Or I say we, me, I am, uh, have a mind or a frame of reference, a paradigm to say, when I'm looking at the dollars, what value adds, what components, what things can I improve on the property to make as much return as possible? Exactly. However, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, exactly, right? However, like th there's a, a big, green, beautiful world with the most precious and valuable resource yeah. to us, our families, our generations to come, and that is water <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and our planet. And the conservation side of it is just, uh, you know, just something that a lot of times it just goes right over my head. We forget about those things. And that's the most valuable resource uh, without without water. We ain't got, we got no life. And man, uh, you know, you, I, my head doesn't go there on a normal, just like an everyday, you know, spreadsheet. It just doesn't go there. But it's like it's an easy button for us to have that impact and, uh, yeah. you know, help, help the, help the environment as well. And that's, that's why we're here. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and Selmo and I noticed that there was that, you know, that gap. And so we're trying to bridge that. So like in some, I mean, how many videos do you see of, you know, li Facebook live videos or, you know, LinkedIn posts of, you know, investors that are like, Hey, look at these upgrades. I'm going to give you a tour. I mean, in some, you know, and I share these things back and forth, right? All the time. You know, you, you see these incredible bathroom units with the granite countertops, the upgraded vanities, and then they're showing that same dinosaur toilet that's been there since the property was built. And it's like, no, there's, <laughs> there's opportunity there. But uh, Abel, you brought up a great point. You know, mm. we, we talk about sustainability and it just goes shoom, right over people's heads. Yeah. And then, and then they start to see or hear the numbers like Kelly had just mentioned where, Hey, it's a $50,000 investment and my, uh, asset value boosts up to 750,000. Holy moly. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Now I'm interested. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's beautiful when that happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think that's probably where I cut out for whatever reason, my internet and hopefully recorded it. But if you can kind of say this part again, uh, yeah. I think it's worth repeating. So a $50,000 upgrade, are you talking like a hundred units or what, what kind of give it? We just say that that would be like a 200 bathroom property. Okay. Okay. 200 bathroom property. Okay. Yeah, so that's, you know, midsize. Right. And yeah. uh, then let's say it's going to be a $50,000 reduction yeah. on the water and sewer in year one. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to calculate that on a six and a half cap. Yep. And that will equate to a $769,000 asset value boost. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. So the 50,000 is really divided by 12, 12 months. So it's 4,000, uh, 4,166. I got a calculator up. <laughs> so yeah. it's like 4,100 bucks a month. Yes. What you were reducing the utility bill, the water bill. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, $4,100 doesn't seem like a lot. And really over 200 doors uh, it is a very small amount, you know, to each, to each unit. It's like 
20 bucks, right? Yeah. Worth of water. So you're like, oh, well, you know, your water bill is typically one of the smaller ones. If you're thinking from a single family home yeah. perspective, it's a smaller utility bill. But if I can yeah. save 20 bucks on my unit, well, when you multiply that by 200, that's the four grand and you multiply yep. that by 12 months and your 4,100 turns to 50K in a year. And so that 50K a year in savings, explain, you said a, a what cap rate? A six, a six and a half. So, so you know, I mean, at a six and a half cap, you know, uh, cap rates are definitely, you know, compressing, right? So yeah. uh, you're not seeing a whole lot of six and a half now, but, um, you know, at that, you just, re you just take that $50,000 and divide it up by the cap rate. And that's where that 769,000 yeah. uh, is, is coming from. So, and, and uh, to, yeah, this is awesome. And so, so to the passive investors that are listening, you're like, okay, we're talking about sustainability. Yes, we are. We're talking about a uh, uh, new toilet, <laughs> new flaps, new, whatever it is to stop this leaking restroom to save us 20 bucks a month. Yes. But when you start to amplify and look at the numbers uh, and, and Kelly says, hey, how do, you, how do you do that as a passive investor or maybe a new general partner? You're taking the 50 grand and you did literally just divide it mm -hmm. by the going cap rate in your market. And if it's six and a half was maybe last year's cap rate, like you said, yeah. Kelly, the cap rates have been compressing over time. So, uh, well, at least the sellers are wanting a lower cap rate. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I don't know if the buyers are necessarily paying for it, but we feel like the cap rates are being compressed. So yeah. if it's a five and a half cap, it's actually $900,000 yeah. because that's how you, that's how we gener generate the value Mm -hmm. of this property because it's really I mean, we're buying real estate but we're really buying an income stream so for a passive investor it's like oh okay this this makes sense that's these plays these are the value add strategies that syndicators operators people like myself and our teams will deploy the strategy across the apartment complex mm -hmm. and that's how we create 900 grand of value because our dollar creates more income and we generate a bunch of it and that's a higher yeah. income generating asset. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Right. Yeah. And uh, it, it really is powerful when you start to think about that and then lay, lay the word impact investment in investing on it. So I've done uh, we're on our second impact investment uh, today. Uh, one of them is already closed, you know, it's a hundred, 120 unit apartment complex and, uh, we put a nonprofit in the deal and the nonprofit got a piece of the pie. So we gave them a piece of the general partner pie. They're benefiting from the ongoing uh, cash flow and they'll be an equity partner at the end. We also have another impact investment going right now, uh, depending on when this show will air, but uh, it's a fund and that fund is doing the same. It's uh, basically giving a slice of the general partner pie to a nonprofit and that has both of these are social impacts. The other side of the impact investing, uh, a lot of people like the, you know, the literal uh, impact on the environment. So if it's social or an environment side, so it's kind of like, you know, you don't have to give any money to a nonprofit if you don't want to go to the lengths that we're doing on the impact investing, but you should feel good that if you're putting some money in and we're having these kind of strategies, like yeah. your, your investment team has already kind of you know, by default, creating some sustainability and water, water conservation through the yeah. process, which is really cool. Yeah. And I mean, you bring up some really great points on that. And the other side also, you know, and I think, you know, as, as a passive investor role, you know, you want to know that when, you know, you are investing with your sponsorship group, what is it that they're doing to protect right? Protect the income on the property. What are mm -hmm. they doing to stress test it? There isn't a single one of us that stress tested COVID, <laughs> right? Uh <-huh. laughs> Nobody mm -hmm. knew that was coming. Um, and, you know, through that, you know, I, my heart goes out to so many of those sponsorship groups that closed on properties like Q4, of mm -hmm. last year, they had their business plans built and their, their major business plan was around, you know, interior upgrades, you know, the flooring, the countertops and in lieu, you know, in exchange for that, then they're going to, you know, bump rents. 
right? And then also turn the units. Uh, so then everything shuts down for a period of time. But then also, you know, even if you're doing interior upgrades, can you really do a rent increase consistently, you know, right yeah. now or even earlier this year? So now that business plan is starting to unravel a little bit. So mm -hmm. what do you do? And this right here is a perfect example of why some of the sponsorship groups out there are still paying maximum distributions. I mean, mm -hmm. I see those questions running all the time. How is this that you're surviving through this? You know, and it's like, because they are, when they're underwriting the deal and they're making their business plan, mm -hmm. they truly are so educated and looking at every single option. Because even if water conservation wasn't written into the business plan, but you're aware of it, and then something like COVID hits and you have to shift the business plan around, you already have your plan B, your plan C, or your you know, later phases. Because we started entering back into units across the country middle of May. So um, it's amazing uh, the demand that has popped up because everybody has seen a significant increase in consumption. Yeah. Uh, their, you know, on their properties. But in addition to that, I was uh, on a event a couple, a couple weeks ago with uh, Greg Willett. So he is the uh, chief economist for RealPage. And he was sharing that um, like the interior fixtures are getting worn out faster because people are home more often. So like your dishwasher, right? Most people in a apartment unit, if there's, you know, a dishwasher, they might turn that dishwasher on, you know, maybe every three days or so. But now because they might be remote working or kids are home, you know, virtually for school, that dishwasher is being run every single day. So those work orders and replacement costs are increasing. So yeah. what are you, what are you doing to control that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, for those, for those, well, this is probably a good uh, point to say it. For those general partners that are in a deal today, if they wanted some help from you in flight right now on one of their opportunities, uh, who, what's the best place to reach out to you guys? The best place to reach out to us, uh, you can reach us on our website, which is sasconserve, like conservingwater.com. And there's a contact us button um, that comes directly to me. Um, hits directly into my email, uh, or you can reach out to Anselmo on LinkedIn, right? Yes. Uh, follow me on LinkedIn, connect with me. I'm always posting great content, uh, trying to engage, trying to connect. So liking, yeah. engaging, commenting, that's good stuff. Yes. I Absolutely. appreciate it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, cool. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, in a deal, you, even if you didn't underwrite to it, it's probably best to call you guys if you need some assistance. Yes. Uh, and like you said, the phone a friend, uh, yeah. great individuals to call and reach out to. If you're underwriting a deal, it sounds like we should get you involved early uh, in that process. You mm -hmm. think LOI before LOI, kind of right in that spot? Absolutely. Because the advantage of engaging us pre-LOI mm -hmm. is that this way, if you move to a best and final, mm -hmm. then you have those negotiating factors. If you need to plug in, you know, water conservation, like you might have a plan for carports or, some, you know, other, yeah. you know, income streams on, on the property. So this, again, if you get to that best and final and you need to sharpen your pencil, this is where it's at, or it might make sense on the front end, which, you know, we're kind of biased. We, you know, we say, Hey, any property that's built before 1995, that you should put a check mark there of, hey, has, you know, there been any type of water conservation completed? And if there has, what has been done and how long ago? Because if it was done like three or four years ago, chances are you've, you have some leaky flappers out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> you, you need to address that because those flappers yeah. can leak, you know, anywhere, you know, in excess of a hundred gallons a day, depending on, oh, you know, how gosh. corroded it is. So you take that hundred gallons a day in that one toilet, and then you scale it across 150, you know, uh, toilets. That's 100 a hundred gallons in it, a day. It can. Yes. And you don't realize that. 
and yeah. and it you know like your you bill said, does the water oh, right. bill does <laughs> oh yeah that gets going to go up pretty quick but yeah it's such a big impact like man we, we you can make a big change on the environment and your yep. bottom line uh and if you're um you know on the on the the loan side on the lending side i know because i help people with commercial loan uh commercial loan uh debt sizing uh, underwriting. I'm a commercial broker as well, but on this side, they can get lot like uh, example, better flush valves, the shower heads, energy star appliances, HVAC controls, those green upgrades and get a discount on their lending side on the, on the terms, you know, sometimes I've seen 10, 20 bips, uh, yep. from your, your financing. You're like, okay, cool. So which parts do you guys do? Is it just the toilets or do you do you know, the shower heads and some of that other stuff or where, where's the line stop and, and, you know, what do you help with? Yeah. So, uh, and some of you want to take that? Yes. Yeah, so just to kind of give you an idea, over 70% of your water consumption on your multifamily property mm -hmm. uh, takes place between the shower heads, toilets, and your aerators. So those aerators are the kitchen and the bathroom. Okay. So over 70% of your water consumption takes place between those three, fi uh, th those three fixtures alone. So that's our focus. We focus on the toilets first and foremost, then the shower heads and the aerators. Uh, because there's and when you're saying aerators, you're literally like the, the faucet, yeah, that so little thing in there. It, yeah. It'll screw on to, to the uh, bottom of the faucet. I got it. Okay. I'm with you. The aerators. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's funny because uh, I, I have been investing in real estate since 2008 and my wife laughs at me because when something breaks at the house, like, oh, I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> I don't know how to fix anything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, the aerator. Call, call my plumber, call the contractor, call somebody in. Yeah, what, what is that? The, uh, the Guggenheimer or the Flux? Hey, but at least you know who to call, right? Oh, yeah. You know, you, I'm you've, got, yeah, you've got the best experts you know, the best team around you. So yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, that's cool. That, that makes a lot of sense. Cause that's where all the, the conservation is. And mm -hmm. um, you can kind of keep going on this kick, but this is probably a great way to, to conserve and help each other. So um, at this point, you know, I think we got a good handle and grasp on like what it is you do and how you do it and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know, I know you guys like to have a lot of fun too. So, and someone showed up and He's, he's wearing this beautiful uh, gray hat. I don't even know the style. Of hat. You know what the style of hat you're wearing it's a, is? It's like a newsboy hat. A, and news, a, a newsboy hat. Yeah. If so, if for those that are not watching on YouTube right now, you know, it's, it's this gray one. And, and he goes, well, hey, I, I thought I'd have some fun. And we, man, we met at multiple, probably multiple conferences before yeah. COVID. We would go <laughs> hang out, big events, all that kind of stuff. And that's how I knew Anselmo and, and Kelly just kind of going over there. But uh, Anselmo, what'd you, why'd you wear that hat, man? Tell me. Because, uh, you know, anybody that can rock a hat like you do, especially one of these, I was like, you know what? I got to go put mine on. I got to wear it because, uh, you know, Abel's pulling it off. I want to do it. Yeah. Make it fun. And again, you know, as Kelly mentioned, I mean, it's toilets, right? How do we have fun with this, right? <laughs> we got to be creative. We got to engage people. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And, and we're trying to make toilets sexy again. Uh, yep. I love it. Bring it, bring it back. Yeah. When, yeah. If, if you see me at a conference, like over the last couple of years, like for whatever reason, whenever I go, I wear some kind of like top hat or a newsboy hat or uh, something. And I'm like uh, fedora, I think is the other, not a top hat, but anyways, I wear those. And so, and someone shows up on the video and he's wearing his, I go, well, I got it. I got that exact one. So uh, <laughs> if you go to the YouTube, you'll see I'm wearing the same hat for this interview. I thought we'd have a good time. So anyways, but that's really it. cool. So so you guys um, are also kind of in the investing world, too. Like, uh, Kelly, I know, you know, you're jumping into it. Tell us about your experience as a as an investor. So you, you, you've got some cycles to you here. Yeah. So this is kind of an exciting piece because um fear, right? That is really what holds us back from accomplishing a lot of our goals. And um, while I'm in this space day in and day out, um, I just, you know, didn't really think that I, that I could get over that. I just, my fear was keeping me from, you know, really digging in on that. But my concern really was 
you know, about being able to do, to diversify my stream, streams of income and, you know, be able to do more and always stay, you know, on my, on this water conservation platform, because this is truly, you know, my way of giving back in the community. But, um, now, uh, it was, uh, it, it was late last year. I was like, okay, 2020 is going to be the year I'm, I'm going in. And, uh, we were at an event in Los Angeles in January and it was that event that I came out of and it, and it was like, I, I'm not going to take no we we're going, we're going to do this. And so I came home and, you know, my husband and I, we talked about it and we had been talking about it for a long time. I'm like, if you don't want to do this as a couple, I get it. You support me in every, you know, dream and journey I have, but I'm, I'm going to roll with this in 2020. Um, yeah. And then, uh, and then the virus hit and most people would be paralyzed with that. And instead I kind of dug in a little bit more and I was like, I'm some, something's going to feel right. I passed on quite a few deals. Um, and then it did, it felt right. Something came and it was the immediate I knew. Um, and I, and I jumped in and everybody uh, like in my family, because we talk about this a lot on the investing side, you know, when you try to explain to your friends and family that are not in this type of space, they don't understand. And so because they don't understand, their automatic response is going to be a negative response. Why would you do that? So the response that I was getting from like my immediate family and, you know, friends was, why would you do that in the middle of COVID? What's <laughs> wrong with you? Yeah. You need to go put that in the stock market. I'm like, no, 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 we're, we're going to do this the opposite direction. So, um, went through, we closed on, uh, just over 400 units in August. And, um, and also I have personal criteria. One of my personal criteria is that any, uh, property that I invest on, uh, yeah. we need to, uh, be sustainable. And that was one of the reasons that this was such a beautiful fit because I was able to be able to be part of, you know, influencing those residents, you know, living and the, and how they're reduction, they're reducing, you know, their footprint. So yeah. here we are and, uh, rolling with the next one. So That's cool. yeah, That's really awesome. I know. So that, so if there's anything I can share, you know, back to anybody that's listening is mm -hmm. that you have to do it. You can't let fear stop you in your tracks. Yeah. And if a lot of us talk about great ideas and great plans, but we never really get underneath this. And it's so funny because I was um, on a Zoom yesterday and um, we were talking about fear. And I said, you know, that's one of the things that I feel like I've really come a long way on in the last two years, but I really want to continue to do that next year. And so this, this lady, she asked me, uh, she goes, so are you ready to jump out of the plane? And I said, not yet. And she goes, then you still have growth to do on this. And I was like, all right. I, so you need to ask yourself is if, are you ready to jump out of the plane? Um, then that means fear is stopping you from hitting mm -hmm. your goals. Mm -hmm. I like, I like the mindset. Yeah. You definitely yeah. Find a way to overcome. <laughs> so uh, I, I have a, the, the follow-up question. And then in some way, I have a couple for you on the same kind of topic too. Yeah. So what were some of the actionable items or the, the things you did to overcome that fear? Like what, what enabled you to say, you know what, I'm going to move forward anyways. Well, this was hard. Um, I had to separate myself from individuals that uh, were toxic, mm -hmm. uh, negative. And then I surrounded myself with others that I felt were great mentors, great influencers. And, and then I just was like, I'm going to have the real conversations and ask the questions and just absorb as much as I can. Yeah. So look at the people around you. Look at who you're surrounded by. Um, that, those, those individuals could be the ones that have the chains on your ankles. 
Yeah. Um, so keep, you know, keep growing this particular year as, as hard as it has been on people's families, the mental health, the economy, it, this has been probably one of the most positive growth years for me personally. And like, when you get to that point where you feel like you're truly fulfilled and you're just enjoying that giving back, I'm there. And I'm so excited about the things that we're planning for next year because, you know, and Selma and I have got some big things on the horizon next mm -hmm. year. Uh, so that's, that's really, you know, the, the big piece of it. I love Have a it. plan. I love it. Have that plan. Separate yourself from others. Align with people that are doing yeah. uh, great things or mentors, coaches, or, you know, people that are already doing what you wanted to go do. Watch the company you keep. And uh, those are yeah. some great, great points. Yep. Hello, hello. You're listening to the Five Talents Podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. If you're enjoying this podcast, then I know you're serious about achieving financial freedom. Are you ready to create your own path through multifamily investing for yourself and your family? Then I know you're going to appreciate our investor's guide to multifamily investing. It's titled Tackling Commercial Real Estate the Easy Way. We use this guide to invest ourselves in $93 million worth of real estate. So we're going to show you the basic mechanics of multifamily syndications and how to evaluate your next passive investment opportunity. So the best part, if you subscribe to our podcast now, leave us a review and a rating. I'm going to give you a free copy of our ebook. So please take a moment to do that now. Once you've done that, go to 5tcre.com forward slash ebook, 5tcre.com forward slash ebook. Make sure to let us know you left a review and we're going to send you a free copy. So thank you so much for subscribing to the Five Talents Podcast. We really appreciate it. So Anselmo, uh, same kind of, you know, thought process. It, it doesn't have to be sp specific to investing, but just, you know, I'm sure you've overcome some obstacles and, and uh, challenges yourself. So maybe, maybe give us some insight in, into your world, man. What, what, what are you working on and overcoming? And then uh, how did you do it? You know, so, and this is something that I just recently came across, uh, Green Lights uh, by Matthew McConaughey. I don't know if you've heard of his book or. No, I, I haven't. Oh my God. Oh, wow. I, I like his, <laughs> I like his, uh, he comes out with these positive videos every yes. once in a while. And I've seen the short ones. I didn't know he had a book called Green Lights. Okay. Yeah. yeah hit, it hit me it with just it. came out. And so he's been on okay. podcasts, you know, lately, just making the circuit, just promoting his book. Uh, and one of the, the things that really stood out and it continues to stand out for me is he, he mentioned that uh, stop being impressed and stop, start getting involved. Yep. Yeah. I, I found myself because we, we interact with uh, investors, owners, nonstop, right? Some big dogs. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you walk away and you're like, wow, they're, that's, they're really impressive. Yeah. And then that's, then nothing happens. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's where I'm going to really take that uh, into account is, Hey, I'm going to stop being impressed and yeah. start getting more involved. So start yeah. asking more questions, seeing how I could be a part of it instead of just watching from a distance. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's the biggest thing uh, for me. And, and that, that's going to happen in 2021. So I'm going to definitely get invested uh, as a passive investor and, and look at things uh, and get involved because I, I have two young well, I have two kids. Uh, they're not young anymore. They're getting a little bit older, but uh, I, I want to be able to provide them uh, with a long-term future and something to mm -hmm. you know, keep moving forward. Yeah. How, how old are they? So my daughter is 11. She's about to be 12. All right. And my son is 10. Big so, kids. Yeah. yeah. And Kelly, do you, you're, I don't know if you're yeah. married kids. Yeah, I am. Uh, I've been married now uh, almost 20 years and I have two daughters. I have a 15 year old and a 12 year old. Wow. Congrats. Um, both of you guys, both of y'all both look young for having those kids. Uh, that's the filter, Abel. <laughs> <laughs> the zoom, zoom, beautiful, make, it, make me beautiful filter. button. Yeah. Make me beautiful button. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah, make Anselmo look 23 or something. <laughs> there he Appreciate goes. He's yeah. got that newsboy hat on. Good. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I, lo I love the mindsets because, you know, so many so many things uh, that we do or don't do 
uh, begin really in our in our own mind. And whether we feed a negative thought or, or feed a positive thought, you know, we have the ability to control our own weather. And so a lot of times if we're not feeding the, the most positive or the I can do or, yeah, let's get involved. If we're not hitting that button uh, mm -hmm. over and over and over again, you know, like another day goes by. And yep. you think, oh, it's just another day, but yep. that's all it is. That's all we have is a, yeah. a series of, uh, you know, eight hours at a time yes. every day, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Yes. So anyways, yeah, yeah, I love it. So just keep, keep getting after it. So in meeting with all of these amazing individuals, uh, people that are very impress impressive, mm -hmm. that have some pretty, you know, uh, big portfolios, a lot of successful investors, they've created millions of dollars for their investors. Can you give us any, um, you know, insights or wisdoms or kind of summaries of thought like, hey, you know, I see the, the, those investors do A, B, C all the time, whether it's on their property or just a mindset thing, you know, you, I'm sure you guys rub elbows with a lot of top players. Yeah. I think we do. Um, so I know in some has got, you know, a lot of great connections. Um, I, I would say, you know, what I see that's really consistent is that there are, there's dedicated time, there's intentional time for your physical well being, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we talk about all your, you know, your typical networking and having your plan and stuff like that, but you have to be intentional with yourself mm -hmm. and be able to keep yourself, you know, healthy and, you know, in that, you know, peaceful zone so that you have the right energy to attract what you're looking to accomplish, right? So that's, you know, from my perspective that I see is pretty consistent. Well, Which is a thing, really great one. Yeah, yeah. One thing that I'll, I'll, I'll mention too is it's uh, so over this last three years, I've gotten to meet some really awesome people. Uh, it's the ones that have been incredibly genuine that have stood out the most to me that, and I, I say genuine because the minute that they found out I was a vendor as opposed to a potential investor, they didn't change. They treated me the same. Yeah. They still valued my opinion. They still asked me questions. And that said more to me than anything. Uh, that said, Mal, you know yeah. what? When it comes time to invest, they're going to be one of the first people I call because they didn't treat me any differently. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the, yeah. the whole being genuine is yeah. key to me. That, yeah. it, that just builds such, you know, a perfect, you know, character about that individual. And I mean, that's spot on in Selmo. Um, I, I would completely agree with you on that because we're on both sides where, where we've experienced that. And um, it's those relationships that we've built along the way that have been, you know, just very unique. I mean, you know, our, our phones, our, our phone book is, is, you know, exciting because, and I would never would have thought that, you know, if I had a question about something, you know, I could call, you know, this individual, I mean, three years ago, I would have been petrified to walk up to that person mm -hmm. and been like, oh my goodness, you know, you see them all the time. And, yeah. you know, but now it's because I was a mentor, you, you know, always be learning, right. Don't mm -hmm. suck the energy out of them. You need to find a way to add value back to them. So they want to continue to engage with you. Yeah. Yeah. I love all, all those points. Uh, the genuine part and character part and just, you know, being the same. I, I saw, I, I actually struggle this with my little ones. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. <laughs> wow. And I, for the most part, I'm like, well, I'm pretty even cute. I like to have a good time. And, and then, oh my goodness, my three-year-old tests me to no end right now. <laughs> and I'm like, don't do that. But it's, uh, I'm trying to remember like, oh gosh, she's three. So, right. okay. She does, no, she does not know not to get in these things that could, you know, endanger her life as I'm watching yeah. her climb up the, you know, the stool and about to jump off. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So, you know, I take these, these learnings even now with, you know, my, my network that I have today. And, and someone told me, uh, they were like, Hey, when you start this podcast, make sure that you're yourself, <laughs> because if you're trying to be somebody else and then they, they reach out to you and, call, and talk mm -hmm. to you, 
and they get a different person, they're going to go like, Hey, what the heck happened? Yep. Okay. Well, that's, that's good advice. <laughs> for, I, for the most part, I just, you know, I'm a, yes. I'm a simple guy, I, I think, and uh, just like to have, you know, engage and learn from others and, and do that. So anyways, th- those are all good points and uh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, is yeah. there anything I haven't asked you about anything we didn't bring any exposure to anything that, you know, you were hoping I asked about and just, just didn't cover during our time? You know, I think we hit on a lot of great topics today around, you know, the opportunities for, Mm -hmm. you know, evaluating the reduction of, you know, the water consumption on the property. Um, I think the only piece that, you know, I would add to this is that even if you have completed a program, um, to still reach out to us because there's ways to continue to protect that asset because a, you know, a leak is going to happen. It's, you know, it's not like, well, if it happens, no, it's going to happen on your property a hundred percent. So like changing tires on your car. Yep. So you, you gotta what, replace them. Yeah. What plan do you have in place on the property to protect that asset? Um, and I'm not talking about insurance. I, you know, I'm talking about, you know, the, the type of process, the technology to, you know, be able to monitor that. Um, so that way you can reduce that leak. So you know, as I shared, you know, there's so many different great things and, you know, 2021 is just going to be even bigger and better with, you know, the ways that we're going to be able to give back in the community. And we so appreciate the opportunity to share today. Right on. Anselmo. Thank you. First of all, Abel, I appreciate you having us on, uh, you know, a year ago, back in January is when we met, but I had, I had been following you on LinkedIn prior to there. Nice. So, so I knew, I knew, the hats you wore. So the minute you walked into <laughs> the com- that conference, like, oh, I see him. I'm going to go talk to him and say what's up. So, yeah, and, yeah, and you were awesome. exactly the same as you were online as you were in person. So I appreciate the genuineness. Oh, man, that's awesome. Well, thank you very much. Good yeah. to hear. And for, for, for you all, both of y'all, thank you for you, the work that you do in the community and the commercial real estate, our investing side of it, just everything you do, all, all about creating the value. So it's very easy for, uh, for you guys to be one of those teams that uh, is recognizable and everybody likes. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All thank right. You. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Abel Pacheco. I'm your host for the five talents podcast. If you heard something you appreciated today, which I think there was a few nuggets on the investor side, passive side, active side, uh, or, you know, just a cu- couple of fun conversations, please go to our show subscribe, rate it, and leave a written review. We would appreciate it. We want to have more amazing guests like Kelly and Anselmo. And so this de- the reviews and ratings definitely help and uh, appreciate the time. We'll see you guys uh, at our next show. So Anselmo, Kelly, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Five Talents Podcast with your host, myself, Abel Pacheco. Each week, we're going to bring you interviews from industry experts and commercial real estate investors who followed their dreams and achieved massive success. Before you leave, let me ask you a few questions. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn something valuable? Was your mind stretched to what's possible and what you can achieve? Do you want other experts just like the one you heard today? If you answered yes to any or all of those questions, then please Take a moment to subscribe to the Five Talents Podcast. Give us a five-star rating. And most importantly, leave us a written review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us your favorite guests. Give us any feedback. I'm excited to learn and improve so you can get a more valuable show. So thank you again for subscribing to the Five Talents Podcast.